Porn Stars are People podcast. I'm Dan Frigolette. I'm here with Sophia Rose. Yes. Sophia Rose with an F. Sophia <laughs> with an F like fuck. <laughs> Uh, thank you for doing this. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. It's we're my at, pleasure. Uh, we're at Exotica in New Jersey. Um, this is your, how many, if you, had to, if you had to put a number on it, how many of these have you been to? Um, only a few, actually. Probably, this is probably like six or seven. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, pr- that's, pretty, that's pretty substantial. Yeah. Anything happening this year that hasn't happened? Um, as far as I don't know, is there anything different? Like, is there anything different? I don't know how. Like, I've only been to two, so I don't know how often they change things around. Well, the show layout is totally different than it was last year. It's definitely bigger. Yeah, it's bigger every year. Yeah. Um, and every city seems to be getting bigger as well. So, like Denver, you know, year to year is getting bigger. Right. I feel like I didn't go to uh, Miami this year because I was recovering from surgery, but it, I heard it was huge. Yeah. And so now I can't wait to see it next year. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And then so. there are rumors. I don't even know if I'm making up the rumors or if they're real, <laughs> but that they're adding um, they're adding uh, uh, Oregon. Oh. And that they're adding maybe Dallas again. I had heard the Dallas rumor. Yeah. I had not heard anything about the Northwest. Somebody that said would Portland. Be, yeah. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Actually. I think yeah. Portland is a, is a is the place for it. I think the I think what we've really? heard through the grapevine is that Dallas was one of these things where we're like, this is Texas. You can't do that in Texas, mm. even though people came. Yeah. Um, no, I feel like Texas would be Dallas would be huge, but. I know, like from my my touring traffic, I have nothing for the north the northwest really? area. I mean, I get one or two like requests or inquiries, but yeah. there's not a lot of traffic. Whereas Dallas and Miami are like yeah. hot spots. Yeah, da- mm-hmm. well, Dallas is like one of those places that's like so overpopulated now. It's just so many. It's so many people. Kind of like Atlanta. It's yeah. like you can't even drive in Dallas at this point because it's like it's like traffic and traffic and traffic. But Portland. Culturally, like it's like one of the strip club places. It's like uh, yeah. per square mile, there's more strip clubs than anywhere else. I think. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm yeah. gonna check it out. Facts. <laughs> fact check me. I don't know. Um, totally gonna fact check. So I th- so I think the so I think the culture and also the other thing that I find in Portland is Portland's one of only a couple places where I've been and and it's just sometimes you go a place and it's just like a dude with like a beautiful beard and he's wearing a dress. So I, 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 like I was working on this idea that like. The closer you get to oceans, like the gap between men and women shrinks. Is that right? Yeah, like when you're in the middle of what the country. What do you country, think that is? Okay. When okay. you're in the middle of the country, it's like dudes in overalls and like masculinity is yeah. like this. I think this I think I know what you're saying, and textbook. I would agree with that now. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, you're right. I, considering how much I travel and the things I see. Yeah. And things I see in airports. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I find that I find that like being in New York puts me more in touch with with uh, dressing well and and fashion. But then if I like this, the further I get away from like New York City, like the looser I have to make my pants just to fit in, <laughs> like, just to be accepted. Because uh, otherwise you come out and like and like pants that fit and they're like, and what's they're going like, on with this guy? Yeah, what is this what? deal? Well, what's yeah, the story? Yeah, what's the story there? Yeah. Yep, totally. Yeah. Totally know what you're saying. My little brother's been living in London and he was going to go to a wedding. He's been like, and he's been like buying clothes. He's killing it. And he's going to go to a wedding in like upstate New York. And uh, and I was like, you're no matter what happens, you're going to be the dr- best dressed one at the wedding. Because mm. people in upstate New York, like their suits are. Do you ever see that movie with Steve Carell? Um, um, it's crazy stupid love. I didn't want it didn't hold my attention, but I oh, did really? see parts of it. Oh, I love yeah. that movie. But so there's just there's just a scene at the end where uh, Ryan um, Gosling is redressing him, uh-huh. and then he shows up and he sees his ex wife. She's like, "Oh my God, Kel, you look great." He goes, "Yeah, apparently I've been wearing the wrong suit size my <laughs> whole life." <laughs> it's just one of my favorite moments because it's it's very true. You it's, go and mm-hmm. they're just like they're wearing these like zoot suits, <laughs> and you're like, "What year is this?" <laughs> What time zone? What, what twilight zone am I in? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. What year are we? Totally. In? Totally. Know um, that. So you're in Vegas. Las Vegas based. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What's, I don't know. Culturally, living in Vegas, I can't imagine that. What is? What do you like about Vegas so much? I mean, it's a great place because you can do the work and the thing, but it's like. Well, everything is there. Yeah. And and I don't feel like I'm in Vegas okay. per se. You know what I mean? That Vegas is so much more than that one mile strip that everyone right. knows. Um, half a million people live there, and I feel like I'm in any, any Southern California okay. city in my part of Vegas that I live in. And so I like that because Southern California is still home to me. Yeah. So yeah, and I. You, that's where you grew up. You grew up. Born and raised all over SoCal. Yeah. Oh shit. So uh, Vegas is just. It was just like I felt like a natural progression. Just. California is just too expensive. Yeah, but my cost of living is great, and um, and I have all that access, and there's never, definitely never a dull moment. There's yeah. always something to be doing. And you're not far. It's like it's also like it's a good travel hub. It's never like that expensive. That's exactly to leave why I love Vegas. it. It's a good launch pad. It's what I call it, my little launch pad. Yeah. 
and it, it's always easy to go home to see the family, to see mom and dad. And they're, and they're still know, in SoCal. Yeah, they're still in SoCal. Cool. And they were getting older, so it was time for me to move back to yeah. the West Coast. Nice. Where were yeah. you in the middle of that? Um, I was in the Boston area no for seven years. Very yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. What did you What did you like or dislike about Boston? <laughs> the cold. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what we hear. I wasn't made for it. My body might be made for it, but I'm not made right, for right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's <laughs> this. Uh, it, um, it is weird. It's like I've been t- I was traveling all year and it's the first it's the first year I like kind of miss winter. Mm-hmm. And so even right now, like today, it's not cold from like a number. It's like, I don't know, it's 50s, it's 60s. It's like nice. From a numbers standpoint. But then you go outside and it's like, uh, like my fingers, and it's like my fingers are getting cold. It's like I forgot. Like this, yeah. if, if I'm getting if I'm worried about this level. Being around for winter is going to be yeah. absolute torture. Yeah, um, I didn't really know what a winter was till I moved yeah. to the East Coast yeah. and, and and experienced my first ice storm, yes. and I was like, wow, and uh, just nothing. There's nothing like it. It's beautiful. I loved uh, the Northeast. It's gorgeous. Obviously, you get all the seasons. It's great, uh, but the winters were too long for me, and the yeah. sh- summers were too short. Yeah, and uh, and like I said, my parents were getting older, so it was time to move yeah. back home to a drivable distance. Sure, to, sure, to sure, see sure. Them. Was that, it's a five-hour run, right? Yeah, b- just about. Vegas yeah. to well, wherever. So to LA specifically, yeah. it's like five hours. Um, so that's cool. That's that. Yeah, I don't. I so Vegas is one of those places that that I've only been two or three times, and each time I go, I go to I explore a different section. Uh-huh. So what I know for sure is like the strip is not where I'm trying to be. Like, I don't want to hang out at the strip. It's no. like a weird thing. Um, but I was able to find some stuff last time. My big thing is, like, I'll find, like, uh, like a barbecue restaurant. And yeah. then, like, and then if I can find a good barbecue restaurant in whatever city, all of a sudden I'm like, yo, Oklahoma City's the bomb. <laughs> like, this is great. <laughs> just because I get to eat, <laughs> that like. That became your favorite. Yeah, wherever. Favorite just cause I get to, yeah, if, I can, if I can, like, so find good. brisket, yeah. yeah, then I'm yeah. good. Um, so, like, I don't know. Can you get the, can you, is there, like, a good, authentic Mexican place in Vegas that you found? Because that's, um, like, that's a big SoCal a, thing, right? Yeah, so that's, like, my thing. Like, yeah. I love Mexican food. So there's a couple. It depends on what you're looking for. I, like, I have my little hole-in-the-wall place that yeah. I love to that's, go to. That's, what, that's my jam. Though. Um, so it's called Habaneros, and okay. it's in Summerlin, and it is amazing. Yeah. And it's, like, 1130 at night, you know, or <laughs> 7 a.m. Yeah. I'm there getting a burrito. No I love that place. Um, but then I there's can, a couple I can get behind places. 11 p.m., but not 7 a.m. burritos. Well, if I have to be up, <laughs> right. sometimes I have to be up. I'm not yeah. a morning person by any means, but if I have to be up, I want, you know, yeah. I want my coffee and then I need a burrito yeah. or a taco Let or me something. Let me get this burrito in me. Yeah. That's funny. Those, well, the tortillas feel like they have crack in them. Yeah. So you're just like, oh. Give me that, that tortilla. That would be a good uh, marketing plan. Actually. <laughs> Just sprinkle a little <laughs> bit of crack. There's some crack in this tortilla. In the tortilla yeah. br- batter. So, um, but then there's a couple sit-down restaurants I love. And then, um, you know, my favorite place uh, downtown in Fremont is Nacho Daddy. Okay. Uh, Killer Tuesdays. They're buy one, get one free on tequila on all price levels. So you can get top, top shelf. Or I feel like you should get like a sponsorship based on that plug. Should I? Yeah, you're like you're like mentioning like drink specials. Oh. Uh, I fucking love it though. <laughs> Tuesdays, I can eat all the tacos and get all the tequila and be yeah. sick. It's awesome. I love it. The <laughs> um, that Fremont was the place I went to last time. Was a t- I, that was like that was a totally. De- I like I was like I was on the strip for like four days, and by like the fourth day, I was like I can't do this. Yeah. And so I was like I got to just figure something else out. So I went to I just went. Were you to like Fremont. in town for a bachelor party or something? No, I was in town for for one of the conventions. Oh, okay. And then it, and then it turned in, or no, I was in town. I think just to do interviews for this podcast. Uh, cause I found very quickly that there's like not a lot of East coast talent. So I was like, I gotta get the hell. I just gotta fly to Vegas and do like 30 episodes to launch this gotcha. thing. And so I was there and it was, and I was doing like 10 episodes a day and I was burnt out. And so I found out there was a comedy festival down in Fremont. I went mm. down there and hung with those guys and it just, it kind of saved the trip. Cause it's just like, a, it's like Fremont is the locals place. And it's like what you think of when like what I think of, cause I'm, I'm just like a weird old school Italian well, guy. Well, that's just it. I was just going to say, yeah. cause that's the old Vegas. Yeah. And so that's what we all think of. Yeah. Like, that's what I expect to see when I go to Vegas, not the Strip. Yeah, parts of my yeah. like brain still think like I was born in like 1930. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it's like, so like, I, like that, just that, like that, like when Vegas was Vegas yeah. vibe. It was, yeah. just, it was really cool. But yeah. then, but then you hang out there too long, and get sick of that too. So it's like there's no winning on any so, of it. So, so that's like the beauty of living there is I, I get to pick and choose when I'm gonna go and yeah. um, be an idiot on yeah. Fremont yeah. or on the Strip, and it's. Uh, it's I get just enough to keep me happy where I go. Yeah, I don't want to keep doing this. Yeah, I mean that fifteen dollar Corona doesn't taste any better than the locals bar is four right. bucks. You know, right? <laughs> right. So. You know what I um. did do one of the times I went to Boulder City, mm-hmm. which is like just next to yeah. like the Hoover Dam on the way to the dam. Yeah, and basically it's like 
it's a it's like a town that like time forgot uh-huh. about. Totally accurate. It just feels like it feels like everybody in you there is a, a time, minor. You go through a time warp when you're driving because I drive to Arizona yeah. a lot, and <laughs> I drive right through, and I'm just like, what is this city? And I did, and I did a show there, and the people there just felt like they were like. They were like uh, 1949 miners. Like yeah, they, like they, I was like, I was like, where? How are you guys still? Alive? They actually, my favorite part of the thing, this, because this is only two or three years ago, and there was a guy at the bar, and we overheard him, and he go, and he was talking about um, the crocodile hunter, uh-huh. uh huh, Steve Irwin. Right, right, right. And um, and me and my buddy looked at each other, and we're like, does he like? Because Steve Irwin's been dead for like 10 years. Right. And so we looked, and we're, we're like, because like nobody's talked about Steve Irwin for a while, so we were like, does he not know? <laughs> The Steve Mormon's dead. Like, like, like has has word he, not gotten here yet? He's not up and up on, <laughs> right. on social media. Right, and, right. You know, he's like in this box. He's like, he's like, have you heard about this guy, the crocodile hunter? He's like, cr- he's crazy. Oh I just, my God. I just like that idea. It's like the, yeah, it's such a weird, tiny, li- but it's such a cool place at the same time. And it's like, it's it like speaks to like hardworking America. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's definitely different. Um, I notice when I drive by, even like the Walmart looks different. Um, yeah. They still everything's just still very run down and and kind of definitely needs a refurbishing. But at the same time, you kind of want to keep it there just yeah. to to remember. Right. <laughs> like this is what we're we were we were all here once. <laughs> right. When when there was like a time when there was just like there was just one street. Although that's what Vegas is about. There's just one street where everything's on. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, it's that's like that was supposed to be. Yeah. But it's like that was how towns were. Like there's t- there's a town that I play in Ohio that it's just there's just one street that used that like has a closed down Ponderosa. It's got like a Donato's. It has the it has one of the comedy clubs and it's just sort of like the street that used to be the popular street. And then it wasn't big enough for Walmart, so then they just made another street yeah. two miles away, and then now that's the street. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like, that's, that's how so we crazy. used to do it. It was like, you just live it wherever, and then you just come to this one street, you get your seventh thing, and you I go back. I feel like a lot of the like more rural areas in my travels, I've experienced that too, where the towns are so small, like they're literally, they're townships, they're not incorporated cities, and that's exactly how it is. There's yeah. that one spot that was like the happening spot yeah. for a while, and then, you know... The big businesses came in and changed right. and moved everything around, and, and you see it trying to develop around this right, cause one it, area. Right, because now you need a road for some reason that has forty lanes, <laughs> and you know you cut across and lanes like to actual do the actual stoplights. And yeah, stuff, right. Yeah. <laughs> the, I do like it when so I dr- I drove to Alaska once, and we would go through a couple towns. I can't remember where this was. Um, drive to Alaska. I drove that to Alaska. Like it was fantastic. Um, we went through some town. I think it was in Colorado. Might have been in Wyoming. It was Wyoming. And there was one town that was still set up like an old west town. Wow, really? And it just and it just had the one street, and it was and it was just these and, and there was nothing on either side of it, and it was just it was like the general store and then the thing, and it's just like one of one of each thing. Hmm. It's like here's the place where you buy this, here's like the place where you buy this. Office, yeah. One post office, right, one hardware store, exactly. one post office, right? Exactly. And it was cool. And then randomly there was just this guy like pl- like playing piano in like old timey like outfit, just like in front of it. We're like, we have to stop the car. We have to get. We have to meet this piano guy. Yeah, you crazy. have to just yeah. like be uh, totally be yeah. inquisitive there. Find out what happened. Yeah. <laughs> when, excuse me. Do you know? Do you know where what you year are? you're in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I never. I never thought of that. Maybe he's just insane. Yeah, he's just lost his mind somewhere it's like along. It's like a movie, like yeah, just, like, like, like the Twilight Zone. Yeah, they, like live in this, and they he's think they're in the same. Right, he's stuck they there. They think they're progressing, and they're not. Yeah, <laughs> and we th- and he's just stuck, and he hasn't made it past that. Yeah, that's uh, we should, I, should, I gotta go find this guy in Wyoming. Yeah, let's go. Let's right, go back I'll go, find I'll this go guy. With you. I'll take. I'll and take we'll that figure trip. it out. Yeah, he's no, that's in, uh, one of the Dakotas. Yeah, that was a great trip. I, I haven't been to the Dakotas. I, I want to uh, go to Rushmore. Yeah, I heard there's nothing there but that. <laughs> yeah, my my <laughs> uncle and my aunt just did that trip. I haven't I haven't caught up with them yet to see what what that's like, because yeah, it's such a specific thing. Mm-hmm. So it's always like, oh, I want to do that if I'm near there. But when are you near? I'm there? never I've never been near, near there. there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've I, I've never played totally. that chunk of the country. I don't know why. I'm thinking about doing a cross country road trip actually you myself. Do it. A tour you should do it. Where I take off from Vegas, go up north up to the northwest, and then cut across northern America. Yeah, what's the route? So where would you um, go? So I would do what is it, Washington and Oregon, and then go across. Yep. Um, probably hit one of the Dakotas. So the next thing is either Idaho or Montana, depending on how probably you go. Probably Montana, and then. And then it's Wyoming. To the Wyoming, the Dakotas, and then yep. get to middle Midwest. And then hit stop and end up in New York eventually. Yeah. So and then, then you go Wisconsin, down. you go back down, so you go to Chicago. So I'll go down and then take and do all the southern states. Okay. So go to New York and then go back and then go back through in the southern states. So so, so, so go down through Florida so and then. Yeah. Hit, yeah. All the so southern states. So then yeah. So for uh, have, so have you been have you been to Alabama and Georgia? Um, I have been to Georgia. So I've driven across country two other times, but they weren't thought out routes. I literally just got on the road and oh, yeah. just kind of went. Yeah. Um. 
so I missed a lot. And that's sure. why I was like, I'm going to rent an RV, take yeah. the dog, and oh, go on for like a great. month and just great. like do this trip. And I yeah. was really excited about it. I just don't know the timing yet. We did this thing. Um, we did it because I basically what happened was I knew a guy that, that grew up in Alaska, started comedy in Alaska. He worked with me and won a thing on the East Coast. And then we were just talking one day. And I've been wanting to go to Alaska at the time. I want to go to Alaska. 2015. Too. And I was just like, how do we do this? What do we do? How do we, how do we I play didn't know Alaska? You could drive there. Yeah. Well, I have a buddy who drove from Portland, Oregon to Alaska. So I know that route exists. So basically, we just started talking. And he was talking about how he used to live in Denver. And I had a, and I had a friend who had just had a child in San Francisco. And we were talking about Chicago. So I was like looking at the map. And I was like, this is like the route to Alaska. Let's just do the thing from San Francisco. We'll go to Portland. We'll go to Seattle. We've never played. Let's go to Vancouver. And then yeah. we'll just rip to, to Alaska. And so he planned this monster 42-day trip. That sounds Alaska. so cool. It was, it was unbelievable. I basically want to do that. It's just be like 32 days across yeah. America. Well, yeah, you don't need forty. You don't need 42 days. We were stopping and doing shows. That's everywhere. what I wanted to do. Is I want to yeah. stop in every city, but the cities that I wouldn't necessarily go like to tour, I would just be stopping to see. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Where I want to sure. stop for a, a few hours because yeah. I want to just see these things, but I don't like like in the Dakotas. I want to yeah. not rush more. Right. And then leave. I it's don't a really day trip, right? Stay there. Right. <laughs> it was the same thing for me with uh, uh, with the Grand Canyon. I had, I had done three cross country tours and never see the Grand Canyon because it's like it's just it's it's like a whole day you have to devote to the just thing. Just to that, yeah. You want to just drive by, like like y I think I had in my head that I could just like Beavis. And, you ever see that Beavis and Butthead movie? <laughs> like in the thing, they were like 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 one day they they like saw Rushmore and they saw like the Grand Canyon and they saw like and then I was like you look at a map and like this isn't really possible. I don't know why I thought uh, the Beavis and Butthead was like that's funny authentic. Don't yeah, don't take advice <laughs> from them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big thing actually in my childhood was that uh, was I that people know. were taking not that they were taking advice but but somebody did something that happened in an episode of Beavis and Butthead and they tried to blame Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember no, what no. the specific thing was. I don't remember. But, uh, but there, but I'm then sure that I was around for that. That too. was the first <laughs> conversation I had ever heard in my life where they were like, "Cartoons are corrupting children." Oh my god! Yeah, I've been nuts. hearing that for years. That's yeah, well now, well now, yeah, now it's become a thing. No. Bill Burr's pretty smart with it. Where, where uh, when people ch he's got a show called F is for Family on Netflix, and it's got no rating. He said it's so it's filthy and it's it's got no language on it. And so um, when people try to troll him about the show, he's like, "It's a fucking cartoon. Shut up!" Yeah. Like, like if this is what you're using as like people uh, just don't want to take any responsibility yeah. for anything. So if they can blame it, they want to blame it. Right. It's right. Just, no. No. Yeah, the the reason why kind of pathetic in that regard. Right. The reason why your kid is this way is because you didn't hug him, not yeah. because he's watching or just didn't for family. didn't love him enough love him enough to discipline them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh yeah, you're uh, uh, you got you got a couple. I don't know. Uh, is your is your age public? Yeah, I mean it is pretty public. Point uh, here's all my here's my point. Anybody <laughs> anybody my age or older was still sort of in a uh, uh, a world where we were getting beat. We got spankings and there was something and, great about that. And we that. were taught respect. Yeah, <laughs> there were uh, and manners. to mind your manners. L yep. Literally, and I would get smacked if I didn't use the fork proper like that yeah. was like, like i was like always being yelled at to keep my elbows off the yes, table yeah. yes it yeah. was like if you're gonna go to somebody's house you have to like you, how are you gonna be a person this is like so important that was to people. always exactly it Baby was always boomers. about how you were gonna behave at someone right. else's house and i'm like well why can't i just act this way in my own house yeah but that was practice right 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 yeah it's like else. how are you gonna get a job if you put your elbows in the day like dad this isn't an interview fuck you like <laughs> i'm just trying to have you know i just want to eat my spaghetti yeah okay? <laughs> yeah we're so far past that i i grew up in the weirdest uh timeline because i was me and my sister were born in the 80s my other sister was born in the late 80s my brother was born in the 90s so my parents changed regimes they got they slacked so by the 90s, no, didn't no, they? Not even that. In the in late 80s, you couldn't hit your kids anymore. Yeah. It was like a big thing. So then they just didn't hit my sister and my brother. And we were like, are you fucking kidding me? We would get, yeah. <laughs> we were like, I'd get we're backhanded like, for that. What was the first 15 years? Why why are they why are they just get to do whatever? It's so funny because I, I, I totally relate to that because um, I'm the oldest of 10 kids. No, You have 10? What are you, a Mormon? No. Mexican. That's all. Uh, okay, yeah. Mexican <laughs> or Mormon? That was my second question. <laughs> so, so, totally buddy. traditional Latino Ten family. Kids. Ten kids total. What's the age gap? Um, the youngest just turned 20. And so, how many years between the uh, youngest and the oldest? When I am 43. I'm 23 oldest. years between so siblings. There's quite a difference in the way my parents handle things yeah. with the younger kids and with me. And Obviously. And I constantly like give them a hard time about You're number it. Number one. Because I'm like, I was taught, I was. So like 
I was always in trouble. I was yeah. always grounded. Yeah. I was always on restriction for something. Right. And these kids get away with everything. You're like, the, you were the first kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you were a trial first. baby. I was, they had to try everything on you. Well, I always say, well, see, if I didn't make it so good and easy for you, you wouldn't have it anymore. Right, Because right, I was right. such a, a saint. Right. Um, but now we look back and, and I'm like, I'm the only one who's productive. I'm the only one yeah. who's a, yeah. a stable job. may not be a conventional job, right. but it's a stable job. Yeah. And you know what um, you love? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm definitely happy and, You're and it's just the terms yeah, yeah my my brothers are like you know they're smoking weed and, and there's nothing wrong with that but yeah. they don't have a but real job at all right but that, yeah <laughs> when, when that's it's that, like it's that co- is their it's job yeah, it's cool when the break <laughs> it's a weed break but it's not yet yeah, that's no, not there's not the weed they day. take work right. breaks <laughs> yeah, right, they right. barely work <laughs> right. um and so i'm just like you guys like step up your game man yeah. like, get somewhere and and the youngest one he's the worst he's sitting there smoking no his joints playing his video games and i'm like dude you ever gonna get a job he doesn't have a license yet i was like chomping at the bit yeah. at 15 taking yeah. the car in the middle of the night right like, i wanted to drive yeah i was doing you're that 20, that was my favorite thing you're 20 years old and you still don't drive you're you still in the license. car i was still in the car in the middle oh, of the night. oh this is my I favorite got thing so much trouble <laughs> yeah me and my buddy we would we can't we devised this plan uh that we we had so you so when you steal the car the hardest part is that you don't want your parents waking up when you start it no, it's bringing it back without your parents. That's yeah, true too. That but it's like, but you, you think gotta get about back that in later. the house. <laughs> but, you, but you want to be able to get out because because yeah. once you take in the car, you put it in neutral and you let it roll out the driveway. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my easy buddy, part. we would push that shit out. Oh we yeah. We push no. it to the street I and then we start right it out. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so. It was funny. more like don't wake up with any of your brothers. I right. always had to tell one of them though because he was. But then you need somebody to have your back. Well, some to have your back, but also not to be if he woke up to be paranoid and like where is she? Where is she? Right. And alert the family. Right. But then one of the times he sang like a fucking canary and ratted me out, yeah. and then I was like, "I fucking hate you." <laughs> well, well, I'm sure your parents had some kind of leverage on him. It was so, like it was like close to well, Christmas, no, I close think to a he birthday. Was, my dad thought my dad woke up in the middle of the night, thought the car was stolen. Oh, well, I it see. was. It was by me. It was stolen. Yeah. <laughs> look, okay, look. So there's <laughs> there's good news and there's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when my brother was like, "It's okay, it's okay. She took the car. She's she's out. You know." And the I was good like, news Damn is it's it. stolen. <laughs> the bad news is, or I guess the bad news is stolen. The good news is, it's your dog. Daughter. Your daughter's Wait, so in. what were you, were you, and the thing was, we were just doing joyrides. We weren't even doing anything, like, illegal when we, besides driving illegally without a license, but, like, were you running out to do crazy shit? I was going out to see a boy. Yeah, there's that, yeah. We were literally we just were going sneaking out. in and out of each other's houses. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were just going out to do just to take the car. Like we were just like, no, I didn't have the balls otherwise. But I was really impressed with myself because I learned yeah. I knew how to drive. I was you like, do I do know solo. how to drive. Yeah, That's I would drive crazy. to his or he'd drive to mine. And we'd, we'd each sneak out and take our parents cars. And That's crazy. Um, That's great. You know, trying to get someone in the window and yeah. not let anyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I had but I, I had That's not the story I told my dad when he caught me. Sure. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted a joy ride, Dad. <laughs> no, it was um, my girlfriend was drunk and needed a ride. And I, so I didn't want to. Oh, look at you. Oh, I like I like this. Like I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a good I'm a pillar of the community. <laughs> I that's was really trying funny. to do a good deed. Yeah, that's so <laughs> funny. No, what did we do? The um, uh, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, because 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 of, of your good deed. My line. good deed. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. Um, what was I gonna say? The uh, yeah, we would take it. We would jo- we would joy rip, and then um, oh no, no, this is what I was gonna say. So I never, I I uh, I wasn't doing all the sneaking in and out of the thing uh, when I was young, but then like uh, life has a way of like working itself out. So like later on, uh, I was like I was like in my late. 20s and i was dating this girl who was in her like early 20s and one one trip i went to see her and she still with her folks and so i stayed she's like it's fine you can stay here my parents whatever so i stayed there and it was cool but then we had to stay in separate rooms and then as a late 20 dude i had to sneak into this girl's room inside the house oh my god it, yeah it was like really that's really it was crazy. really weird yes and then, and then we'd have to like sneak into but her see, bathroom I come from a traditional family and if i had if i was bringing a significant o- um other over yeah even now yeah in my 40s yeah um, I would have to have separate beds or separate rooms with that person too because there's still younger yeah. kids in the house, so they have to set the example. Well, and I get that, and that's fine, but, but it's like, like but do I'll it, but stay in a hotel. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, so it's like, so the sneaking thing was just like, it just, I was like, what am I doing? I was like, I was like, I'm like almost 30. What am I doing? <laughs> like, it was exciting the first couple of times because it was like, also, it was like they had like a, like they had like a, I think it was like an open door thing. So, like, me and this girl are like, I'm th- almost 30, and me and this girl are, like, hooking up. I'm trying to her get her dad's, on, Her dad's see. right below us, like, watching TV, and we're just trying to be quiet. So it was, like, a little exciting, and it was a little, like, I got to get my life together. Like, yeah, this is not yeah, that's a little bit too much work, I, yeah. I think. Well, it's actually, it's more like I get, it's more like she has to get her life together, but, like, when you're in that moment, that's not what you're thinking. 
Well, of course not. I was like, why am I in this environment? <laughs> like, she's, that's on her. But I was like, why am I, put, why am I putting my, why do I, why am I so hard up for pussy that I'm going to fuck this girl in front of her father, basically? <laughs> the door open. Yeah. That's Were you like listening? You're like, is it a commercial? Let's make sure it's not a commercial. Yeah, it's one of these. Things, right, it's one of these things. Yeah, yeah, and they had like a double staircase so they could sneak up on us. Uh-huh. Yeah, we were. <laughs> just be, like, yeah, listening to what they're doing. So yeah, you don't it was get terrible. Yeah, awful. it's terrible. Yeah, it's like, and then and then you have to come up with ways to like to like spoon fuck yeah. so that you can get your shit back and to go. You know, you can you yeah. can like hide. Hide really quick. Yeah, if you get, get the caught. get no, the dick know, away. That's, too, that's way too much work, man. Yeah, it's like again, it's like it's a little exciting. It's a little voyeuristic. It's a little cool, <laughs> but not when it's the dad. It's like that's the worst one. Yeah, that's no, funny. you don't ever know what you're really gonna get with the dad, so you gotta be careful there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It scares me. It scares me even the idea of 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 them becoming a dad, because because I know how I think. Yeah, totally. It's garbage. <laughs> so we're all, okay. So you would do uh, you would do Mount Rushmore, which when you see, I've seen the the zoomed out pictures of Mount Rushmore. And then that's what's made me be like, uh, it's not on my list. Like, if I'm driving by, there's cool. nothing else there. Yeah, actually, a good friend of mine actually just did it, and he was the one who was telling me about it. And he was like, there is nothing there. Yeah. It's like there's one place to get food, like kind of like what we're saying, yeah. time warp. There's one place for everything yeah. on the way. Um, the prices are ridiculous because they know right. that's the only place right. to get it. Right. You know, that bottle of water is not going to get, s- you can't buy it somewhere else. Right. It's all, so it's expensive. And um, and he was like, but he said it was definitely worth it. And I just think that's just like a cool sight to see. Yeah. But it would just be a quick stop. Let's go see it and then snap, get snap. Out. Yeah, selfie, selfie. Exactly the selfie spot. Peace and, out. And get out. Exactly. Yeah. The uh, I never, I never understood. I was like, I was into photographer, or photography in high school, um, and I got pretty good at it. This is before it's like like the cusp of digital. So I was like, I was still rocking on film, and so I never, because I was always able to take good pictures. Never, I never understood why somebody goes to like one of the most famous things in the world and then they stand in front of it, and they go take a picture of me. And then they just get the picture taken of them in front. It's like, here's me in front of the thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, for me, it's like, I'd rather just see the thing. Like, yeah. I don't. So like people are always like, do you want me to take, do you want me to take a picture of you in front? No, no, no. I, would, I know what I look like. Right. Well, so for me, it's always been, why do we go and we take all these pictures? I have like 500 pictures of the exact same thing. Yeah. And you don't really show them to anybody because right. they're on your phone now. Yeah. But back in the day, back in our day, right? Yeah. You had film. You printed the photos. And we also had you no idea whether or not you got it. Yeah. That was the other thing. I mean, I was, I had a 110. Yeah. Like, that's uh-huh. old, old. The skinny one. <laughs> the little skinny yeah. one, right. And it, the way it wound and it was wound. like, it's just like the Yeah. 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 The grinding. I love that. Yeah. And, um, and then if you were lucky, you got to put together like a scrapbook or a photo yeah. album of some sort. Right. And you don't really do that anymore. Actually, I bought a Polaroid for Exotica for that reason because I the was like, I like the nostalgia. Yeah. And I was like, how cool. Like, you get... You get the picture. You get to see. You know. You get to see it really pretty quick, and I can sign it. And it's like a little. Oh, that's thing. great. Instead of. I mean, yeah, you can get your selfie on your phone, but I can't sign your selfie. Right. Right. Yeah, you that's know? great. Yeah. Uh, it's just, and it's something to hold. It feels it like you got like something you have, for like, your really money. Really have it. Yeah. yeah. That's you know. the hard part now with when my business with uh, with putting out an album. I put out an album last year. I nobody wants a CD anymore. Mm-mm. I can't play oh, a CD. Same anything. thing happens in porn. Nobody buys DVDs right, anymore. Right. So I had to like figure out how to uh, put it on a USB and ha- like give it to somebody and make it worth the time, like the time and the and the thing of like holding on to it. Yeah. It just sucks because everything is just like no, nah, just go get it on iTunes, and it's nothing personal about it. So the Polaroid. Yeah. So the Polaroid. So game. I thought the Polaroids were kind of an, a neat and personal touch. Yeah. Um, some people still don't. They're like, "What's a Polaroid?" What, you say, like, what is? What are you saying? I was like, <laughs> "Are you s- are you being funny right now?" Like, yeah. No. Uh, like an no. instant picture. No, I've bumped. I yeah, I've bumped into some people that like that have that missed an entire chunk of of like the world. I was trying to I was trying to resurrect. I'm actually glad I didn't miss that. Aren't you glad yeah. we were born when we were born? We we, got, we got all got the right trans- stuff. Yeah, we got the transition of yeah. both. Yeah, the know? fact when you said 110, I was like, yeah, I know exactly what you're well, talking you about. Know what a little, yeah, the the little knobs and the and the flat rectangular the one, yeah. Because yeah. it, it was like uh, you didn't have to do anything. Like you could be an idiot and still load the camera. Yeah. Because like later the 35, well, you, you had to pull it tra- out. You were trying to sh- you should see me trying to do the um the Lo- Polaroid. Loading a Polaroid I is confusing. I was like. Oh, I don't want to expose this because once it's exposed, it's over. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah that was like a big problem. Yeah, it's like, oh, you ruined all your they film. They made it dummy proof. Like I put the thing yeah. in, and it's it immediately starts it's and got spits the th- a and clip, it spits like the first a, one a out. clip yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it's like a little plastic thing. Yeah, and then yeah. so I think it's like the protective covering. I'm like, I they dummy proof. Are you a gun? Are you a gun person? Um, Let's call it a clip. I called it this a clip. Sp- sp- I've, I've a shot clip. a few guns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You live in a place where you live in a place where you, b- you can pretty much get your hands on guns and can shoot. Yeah. There's actually some really awesome shooting ranges. I went uh, probably about six months ago and then uh, had a DM on my Twitter that said, did I just see you at the Las Vegas gun range? And I was like, 
You sure did. So I hear this one a lot. <laughs> do you want those people to walk up to you, or, or do you are you happy for them to just message you later? Um, you not on a gun range, probably. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I prefer people come up to me because when you're leering or lurking or um, doing anything like that, it actually makes me quite uncomfortable. Yeah. And so did you know that somebody was like... I wasn't because I was really focused on yeah. the gun <laughs> right. and, and shooting. Yeah. Um, but there was apparently a group of them that, oh. that saw me and knew it was me. And I was like, wow, you know, I was like pretty much dressed like how I was now. Yeah. I, I wasn't like showing. Right. You know what I mean? I was in sports gear to shoot guns. And um, everybody knows you got to wear a, a tracksuit to shoot <laughs> guns. <laughs> <laughs> it's common knowledge. <laughs> and uh, so they they were like some big rifle convention type people. Oh, no and shit. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's not my scene. But, you know, thanks for saying hi. Like, yeah, uh, yeah you know, I prefer people come up to me because when they're because when they are leering at you, you're just you're just very uncomfortable and yes, not, you're, you're not you're not sure sh- why you're like are you staring is at me because, because you rec- me, recognize me or are you staring at me because you know a broccoli in my tea like right, why, why are you right, looking yeah, at me like that thing? like yeah. what's the problem and i do get a lot of looks from all kinds of people for different reasons so yeah. i just i shrug most of it off right but at the same time like i'm, I'm always questioning and there's definitely the look like you know they just recognized you yeah um and I think sometimes men are just embarrassed. Sure. I guess they're like, yeah. Oh well, God, I think it's, like, I think it's both. Know. I think it's also. So. I think it's this thing where I think I think fans don't know if whoever you're with knows. There's always that, but most of the, most of the time, I'm with people that know. Yeah. yeah, and then and then there's also the one of like, do I want to out myself? Yeah. That it's like it's like oh I know, but it's like oh, but then she's gonna know that I know. And it's like yeah. she's gonna know that I, gonna, what I'm she's doing. She's gonna know that I saw her naked yeah, and right. did stuff. So. <laughs> right, that I'm that I'm a creep. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. that's okay. Those kind of creeps are okay. Yeah, I like friendly perverts. Sure, sure. You know, <laughs> well, that's a th- that's the thing that I that I love about this community is, and it's not unlike when I I so I I film my album at a nudist colony. Okay. So it's not unlike this this other thing where it's like and the all the people that I've met in the last couple of years that are very like sex positive, and like un- just understand the complexity of sexuality. Uh-huh. It's like I just feel like it, they're they're like twenty years ahead. From like all the people that I meet that are repressed everywhere yeah. else in the country, and it's like, so all the people in this community that are just like, like you know, like like it, the impulses that you have, we have them too. Like it's all, it's all, we're all part of the same thing. Yeah, I think like that you're we've not been, a weirdo. We, right, we've been taught our society. We've raised our, we've ra- been raised to think that sex is shameful. Yeah, and that um, that these feelings we have are not normal. Right. When, as we start talking about it, and obviously there's groups of us who realize. This is actually very normal. Yeah. This is our natural instincts as human beings, yeah. and we just need to embrace it. If it turns so many you on, it's going to turn like a lot of other people on. Right, and we need to embrace it, and a lot of people are just, yeah, they're repressed. They're being told that's wrong, and that's not okay. And I don't think your body is ever really wrong, or yeah. things are right. not like okay. That. Your yeah. body isn't wrong. Your right. body, you got to listen to yourself yeah. and what, what you like. And that's why um, when people, you know, come out of the you know proverbial closet about whatever lifestyle choices they're making, I think that... I don't. I don't think it should be such a big deal because you're just listening to what your body has yeah. been telling you. Your natural urges, and that's that's never wrong. Yeah, the 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 you know the the world where you're like just trying to squash it away. I just think if you try to squash it, it just grows. You fight it, and it just it gets, gets worse, bigger yeah. and bigger, and then it, it you know, and maybe something that was like could totally could have been a normal component of your life is now like taking over parts of your mind because you're not. You, you kind of become obsessed with it yeah. because. It you can't escape it. You're not because you're, you're not, not know, you're not draining. You're, you're not, you're not, not popping that zit or yeah. whatever. I yeah. guess that's the worst possible yeah, analogy. Yeah, there you go. That is um, good. It's an accurate analogy. It yeah. bugs you and it bugs you and it gets worse. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. just grows. Yeah, it's like that. That was that was sort of that was the the pin that I used to have a discussion that turned into. I don't. I don't think I started. That, well, I was. I like sat down with somebody and we were like we were like deciding what our relationship should be, and we sort of decided to make this thing that's as close to an open relationship as as, as that's the that's the closest like. Um, already decided upon definition, but it's like we didn't start there. We just started with this idea of like, um, like if you have feelings for somebody else, and then you can tell your partner, then it grows and it becomes this other crazy thing. Mm-hmm. You should like be in this world where you should could talk to. You should be able to communicate. So we it. started from honesty and like openness, and then that became like, oh well, maybe if neither of us is around, maybe it's okay for us to do other things with other people. Um, but I, do you know Tayomi? Mm-mm. She does. She 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 calls herself a glamazon uh, sexpert, and she was doing some of the um, okay. 
the conference or the uh, seminars this weekend. Okay. And I thought this was really cool. She uh, and, and her partner, her husband, they like they have a, on their wall. They have like like a like a, a list of r- like rules. They like wrote a contract for their relationship. Interesting. And I just feel like we should all be kind of in that world where it's like this. We gotta because we don't know. I don't know what you think a relationship is. Right. We have all these assumptions. Right. Right. Absolutely. And until you voice them. Right. No idea. Well, I think communication is such a huge um, factor, especially in this business, uh, in order to have a successful and functional relationship, whether the relationship is open or not. I always tell people communication and honesty are two um, two biggest factor factors to be successful. Um, and unfortunately, it's human nature to not want to be so forthcoming with those things. Right. Honesty and communication are not easy. So you have to be you have to walk in with the mindset to be prepared to do that. And yes. some people just aren't. And again, it comes back to, um, you know, being repressed and taught that our feelings or, or the way we, um, our natural urges as a human being are not okay. So right. we don't want to share that with our partner. But when really, if that partnership is what it's supposed to be, then you should be w- not only willing, but able to communicate that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm lucky that I have those, t- I have that kind of a relationship and I'm able to, function you right. know where there's com- complete honesty and, and yeah, communication cuz it seems like pe- a lot of people that i meet um their relationship and their partner starts to dictate the life that they can lead absolutely lead because and of I their don't own and i don't live i don't have that kind of dictating relationship there's definitely rules and boundaries and respect for those yeah. things um but they're few and limited yeah and um, but that's the agreement. Will that change? Sure. I could never write those rules out and have an actual contract for it because it's I think my business is always changing. Sure. So there's sure. Gonna, the dynamics of my relationship are going to have to continually change and with that. Not, and so. the point is not that that, you know, that you signed it and it's locked in. Yeah. But just the idea that like you actually sat down and said, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. And when it changes, you come back and you have that yeah. conversation. And you need to have that conversation because that's why I think so many women think they're in a relationship with the guy and the guy's not in a relationship. He's in like six of them. So, right. you know, that's well, and, and, and there's the modern day situation ship. Th- well, there's this <laughs> thing. There's this thing that we do with omission where we go. She doesn't need to know or he doesn't need to know. And I, and I think that's where we get hung up. Mm-hmm. It's because all of the things that you think you don't have to tell me then become the things that completely change what what this thing is right um it's like i don't know uh even just even just the term like it's like knowing what was going on in the person you're about to date's life like it's like if they're dating seven people um leading up to and then they just chose you like that's information you should have yeah Absolutely. Because um, you actually could f- feel great. They chose you. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like. Well, and you still might be dating five other people. Right. Uh, well, if we're making this decision, we both should be making this decision. Not one of us should be committing more than the other. Right. Ahead of the right. other. And then so. and just sort of both know where you're at. And then yeah. not be. Afra- I think we're all just afraid of what the other person is going to think. But it's yeah, like. We all think too much about what everyone else thinks. And that's got to stop. It's I like know my last fuck was given a long time ago. So yeah. I don't. There's a lot of prediction. It seems like people are trying to predict what wha- somebody else will feel or say. Yeah. And no. it's like, no, no, no. Just ask. Uh, this happened the other day. Somebody, somebody told me I was predictable. And I was like, thank you. Uh-huh. I was like that. Cause to me that said, I am the most honest. Uh-huh. Like if I say something, they're like, yeah, I knew you were. Uh, yeah. I knew, I knew you knew I was going to say that. Cause you know <laughs> what kind of person I am. Cause I'm telling you all of the time. Yeah. I always, I, I'm actually, I feel like I'm the opposite, but I, I am and I'm not. I am consistently unpredictable. Yeah. So there, that's my consistency. Sure, sure. Is that I don't, there's just, you know, um, I work hard. I always deliver on what I'm going to say, what I say. I always deliver that. Um, but I, the, you, you can't tell me that uh, I, I'm going back to Vegas tomorrow. Right. Because I, tomorrow could come and I could end up, you know, who knows, Denver, yeah. in Denver. Right. That's cool. So that's my unpredictability. Fuck it, let's go run an you know RV and I mean? go to yeah, Denver like right now. Yeah, like I just now. end up places, and I'm like, I don't know, how do I, how do I do this? And yeah. when I first, um, when I first like ventured out, like into my my sexual expert, you know, exploring and learning about the world, um, my parents used to joke that they would just call me and ask me, well, what time zone are you in? Because I was just oh, showing, yeah. I was just taking off and showing sure. up places, and they were like, why? And I was like, I just needed to see more than. Southern yeah. California, sure. like I was trapped in Southern California, yeah, and I would just show places, and and that just kind of began this, um, this wanderlust, I guess I yeah, have now. Yeah. I just want to see everything and every everyone, That's and yeah, see all the different uh, 
time zones or time warps that we have out sure. there. And people are stuck in different uh, elements, you, you know. Have you – my takeaway the last couple of years of travel is that every place is like a little bit the same. Now, not the place, but people are – pretty much the same everywhere you so go. So I say it's people like are the hopeful. same. Only thing that's different are their clothes and their cars. Yeah. Yeah. So, really but the is. the way they think are is very similar um in like the only difference is, is some are a little bit more progressive, but the the mindsets are still there. Yeah, and um, it's not their fault if they're in a yeah. community where it's like these are the bounds of the yeah. thought. And I just I think part of, you know, like for me being a traveler like I do, um being very self-aware is important. Yeah. Um you know, I don't have an issue with my body and what people see and what they don't see but i'm aware of what would make someone else uncomfortable sure uh not that i care what they think sure but i care that i don't want to make other people uncomfortable right so i try to be aware i mean even leaving the award show last night I, I didn't know where i was going right from the show so i threw on a t-shirt i was wearing just a bustier yeah. you know what i mean i it's not that i don't i, I love my body i to show it off but i don't want to offend yeah anyone well it know? goes back to the manners thing it's like it's, what it's would be appropriate in this situation yeah, it's and manners. it's not about you as much as it's about like somebody's grand it's like you and it's just it's just like a comfort thing you go to a place where there's like a bunch of like grandmas and they're wearing yeah, and they they're like, walk into ruby tuesdays right. and just be like hey everyone look at my ass and cleavage well, i think you know I, th what I, mean? I think so that's where you should show your ass and cleavage yeah. ruby tuesdays yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i did one of the nights um anyway <laughs> there's something to be a ruby tuesdays right next to my hotel um so, but otherwise, I, I'm very self-aware. And yeah. that's just, I, I feel like self-awareness plays such a huge part in in uh, any person's growth. You can't, you have to become self-aware. And it's harder, obviously, when you're in your 20s. You know so much less about yourself yeah. than you do in your 30s and 40s. Yeah. Um, but if we learned that self-awareness a lot sooner, I feel like a lot of things would be different. Uh, yeah, I think there's that. And I think there's this other there thing would where be it's less like... So let's stop making up our mind about shit. Right. I was going to say there'd be less. Why is this always happening to me? It's not always happening to you. Like, yeah. be more aware of the fact that this isn't, you know, a delayed flight isn't just you. Yeah. There's a lot of people impacted by right, that same right. thing, but they they very me centered. Right. You know? Right. Ugh, I had the worst day. Why would happen? Well, first they fucked up my coffee. All right. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, I don't even have to. Not, you know, <laughs> and I have days like that. I'll be like, everything just got in my way. Like yeah. life just got in my way today. I need to go to bed and start over tomorrow. Yeah. But uh, but I could easily turn that into why does everything happen to me? Right. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. When somebody when somebody <laughs> texts me UGH, I go, I'm not going to respond to this. I don't <laughs> I don't need to know what's on the other side of ugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let, let, I'll just wait till this. Whatever it is, let's wait till this thing blows over. <laughs> you know. You're like meh. <laughs> yeah. M e h. That's send back what you M e h. Get. <laughs> meh. Meh. <laughs> look at look at this adorable uh, uh, dog. I can tell oh you. I can tell he wants to meet Bring me. Bring that puppy over here. I can tell he wants to meet me. I miss uh, my dog. This is the worst yeah. part of traveling. Is yeah. that I miss my little chihuahua. Yeah, I feel bad. So I'm not far. Uh, I'm an hour away. But but then I'm here all day. So then I just feel bad when I come back. It's like it's like what did you do? I'm like I, I feel like what did you do today? You just waited around for me all day. That's I just feel bad. That's the dog's life. Yeah, Their life is waiting. waiting for you. Yeah, is waiting. Yeah. She doesn't have a real concept of time, though. That's that. At least I convinced myself of that. I I try to convince myself of that, but. <laughs> gone five minutes or five days they still act the same way when you come home yeah well and then, and then i can tell especially when when she's missed me because like there are times when she's just like we when we've been hanging out for like a week and she doesn't really care and she's like she sleeps in bed with me and then so she'll she'll just she'll just get up in the middle and go like and chill in her in her she's got a chair she's got her own chair but then when i've been gone for a couple of days she's not leaving she'll actually she she'll sleep leave. in one spot that's so funny that's how my dog is so when i'm home and i'm home lots it's yeah, exactly it's like, the same. Eh. He, he'll get out of the bed he'll in the middle be around. of the night. Yeah. But then when I'm only home for a night or two, yeah. it's like he's glued to me. Yeah. And I mean, shadow to the bathroom. I'm in the shower. Yeah. He's sitting there waiting for me when I get out of the shower. Like everywhere I go, my puppy he follows and waits. When my dog was like the first, the first when I first got her, I would go, I would go try, to, I would go try to take a shit, and she would put Sit her, right there. no, she would put herself in my in my pants and underwear. Yeah. She would curl up in the thing between my legs. Like yep. that's how close it had to yeah. be. Yep. Crazy. That's I've had dogs that way and my dog crazy. is the same way yeah she, he'll he'll do that or he'll make circles around the toilet because he's small enough to get behind yeah it. oh wow keep walking around and like you can't leave until like like 
I don't know, like I'm his prey or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just won't leave. All right, let's let's do the quick shout out where I say, pay for your porn. Please pay for your porn. Yeah, pay um, for it. If you didn't, if you if you saw some content on the internet and you didn't pay for it, then uh, chances are that you oh. did that. Uh, the performer <laughs> didn't get paid. I just got snubbed by that dog. <laughs> that the performer did not get paid. It's not even that. You know, can you not know like dogs read like uh, like human energy? Uh huh. So like, I was gonna get snubbed by the performer. So like, the dog was like, okay, yeah, no, yeah, he's, we're he's, snubbing this. He's dude. not important. We're snubbing him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please pay for your porn. Uh, somebody said yesterday, and I thought this was brilliant. That she said, uh, she said, vote with your dollars. Yeah. And keep keep the people that you love in this industry in this industry. That um, is, it's very important, and I don't think people, uh, I people just don't understand the value yeah. of it. You I, know? Yeah, I, I think th- it's not even that. I think they don't understand. They go, oh no, the person got paid, and it's like they don't understand the the commerce of this business. So that's why yeah. we try to have that speech. Uh, how do people do that for you? How do people pay for your porn? How do, how can they find your stuff? I love sophiarose.com and you get a monthly membership. I have uh, memberships to offer all price levels. Um, I do have OnlyFans, which is just OnlyFans Sophia Rose. I have Fan Centro, also I love Sophia Rose, um, and those are there's various. My Snapchat's available there. My website. Um, I do many vids, and I offer contests where I will give out um, annual memberships for um, very reduced prices and stuff like that. So I get paid very out cool. very well from all these companies. Good, good um, stuff. Um, and congratulations. I was yes. at the Ink Awards last night. You won Thank some stuff. Thank you. I won some stuff. Um, we're like we're gonna be ten weeks out from this, so I don't know how timely it is. But uh, uh, you you won and you did the thing. Uh, uh, sorry, you won. You won. Uh, um, BBW Performer of the Year. BBW Performer of so the Year, and then back the to back two years in a row, and then um, the I run an internet based one. I won uh, Best Model Website. Best Model Website, yes. And that one was such a huge one because that has nothing to do with my size or yeah. my ethnicity or anything, just about my work. Yeah. And I had taken over my website. I've always had a webmaster. Yeah. Um. So this was the first time I said, okay, let me try to do this on my own. Isn't that meant it great? I had to learn how to do editing and yeah. shooting and. You know, but the freedom of the being able to like you like find a typo and then you just fix it. You yep. don't have to email three guys. I don't guys. have to blame anyone. Yeah. If this something didn't get done on time, it was my fault. Yeah. now. Um, and it's it's such a liberating feeling. Yeah. And to get recognized for that on top of that was just huge. I did not expect it. I didn't expect either award. Right. But to get that, um, knowing that the ladies that I was nominated with are who they are, yeah. was just like. Wow, I'm like nobody. How did I do that? Right. <laughs> and that is my fans. That is the my fans. That was a fan voted cool. um uh nomination and so they they turned out. They showed yeah. up for me and oh, that great. means a lot and you know, that's to me still supporting. It's not supporting with your dollars, but you're supporting me which in the end, I mean, I won five hundred dollars. Awesome! Oh, great! But oh yeah, they have having, a gift card. Yeah. yeah, I got a gift card, and um, and but on top of that, now having that recognition um, helps me make more money. So sure. I always tell people if if you can't for some reason, I understand financial constraints, and you can't afford to pay for something, vote. You know, voting is yeah always helpful. Yeah, you know, I do. I do like. I do like where. I mean, I've only I've only been adjacent to the to this industry for a couple of years, but I do. But you know, I've 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 been a consumer for a long time, so I do like how everything is becoming more accessible to people, and mm-hmm. and that almost personalized content is becoming the the nature of the of the game. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, it it just it just makes it that much more rewarding, even for for a fan or for a, a consumer. Oh yeah, I would agree with that too. From the feedback I get from the fans themselves, they the ones that do you know frequently buy or pay for porn, um, often get the talent's attention. So that's the way to get our attention. Yeah. Um, is to stand out by paying and when they do that they always tell me it makes me so happy to support an entrepreneur like yeah. yourself like you're doing so many things and I feel like I get to be part of that by supporting you yeah. and I'm like but you are it is and it, that's it's and that's why we're grateful for yeah it. it's super so. exciting for me when I see somebody that like like start uh, in this business and then they're like they're not sure what's gonna happen and then it's like I you know I I, uh, I come back to their page a couple months later and all of a sudden like they, they they're signed they're blowing up and there's all these things and they're on everything it's like it's really exciting I I think those are my, probably my most favorite fans of all are the ones that I've had that have been around since 2006. Yeah. And they're like, I remember when you were just doing modeling and you didn't really show a whole lot. And I've been a f- huge fan since. And now to see you now. And I'm yeah. like, that means that's when they great. go, I followed you back on my space. Right? I'm like, oh, my God. That's, that's like great. Yeah, so yeah. long ago. Remember, <laughs> remember when you were on cassette? Remember? <laughs> remember your eight tracks? No, I like that. I like that idea. 
I got a yeah. record. I got a Thanks record. You. And those you. are usually the people that actually still buy my DVDs yeah. and want to sign sure. copy because sure. it's more collectible at that yeah. point. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much to my guest, Sophia Rose, thank for being you. on the podcast. The Porn Stars Review Podcast. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on Stitcher app. We got some content tonight from uh, you uh, that goes on YouTube. Wherever you found us, we're on the other thing. We have a new episode that drops every Monday. You can check out Sophia Rose's Instagram. We had a little live thing today. Yeah. Uh, do we do? Do we tell them how to get? Instagram? Instagram is I love Sophia Rose and my Twitter is at BBW Sophia Rose. Thank you once again to my guest. Uh, thank you to our listeners. Uh, keep supporting us. We'll keep putting out good content when we can. Thank you so much.